people ask, what is a missionary? You know, you read uh, the next missionary book will come out and it will say one thing and then somebody will dispute it. Uh, people say everybody, you're either a mission field or a missionary, but yes, that's some truth to that. We are all called to be a witness. We're a witness. However, a, a sent one, a missionary is one now, you may, the church may uh, appoint someone in their fellowship and send to uh, uh, a group of people that are not necessarily being reached in North America or Canada or something. That's a missionary. It's being sent. Uh, there's Missionaries are sent to other countries to, that have a need to share the gospel. A missionary is a sent one, a sent one with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now that's the primary purpose, that people might come to know Christ, Jesus as Savior. Now we, we have humanitarian ministries, but the whole purpose of that is because we're, we're practicing the good works that God has called us to do as compassionate people, God's people. Good works are not the gospel. They are living out the gospel. They're not the gospel. Good works open the door for the gospel. But Christ Jesus came to this earth to save sinners. And we need to share the good news of Christ. So when our son has a school for needy children because of the need in that area, the whole purpose is that these children might grow up and low the Lord Jesus Christ. The example of children and being helped to their parents, their, their relatives, their grandparents, that they might come to a saving knowledge of, of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we might pray that God will save them as they hear the gospel, the good news of Christ. A missionary is a sent one. Uh, we were talking to a friend of ours from India recently, and he was saying that when he first went out as a missionary that uh, he went out from one church. Now he advises that is not a good idea. Now I know this is very controversial. Local churches, uh, what happens, they change pastors. They get a new missions committee. They change their policy. They change their, their, uh, their, uh, their goals. And the first thing they usually take care of to drop in their budget are missionaries. So we have always encouraged to be sent out from a local church, yes, but also to have contact with other local like-minded individual churches, uh, churches, plus many, as many as possible individuals that will pray for you and, and, and support you in ministry. Because uh, churches fail, and the first thing they they eliminate are their missionary force. And so our donors, uh, donors, I like to call them partners in ministry. I don't like to even say, thank you for partnering with us. My, I think Margaret and I like to say, it is an honor to partner with you in your responsibility as a local church or individual to uh, take the gospel to the ends of the earth. We are partnering with you. We're part of the family of God to do this for the kingdom. So, uh, you know, it's wonderful. We, got, we get gifts. Um, we got a gift from a little, you know, you have these little stories of this little old lady someplace in the middle of nowhere who gives her might. What little, that's true. We received a gift of $97 uh, a check recently from someone here in the States. We live in South Carolina. And she said, I hope you can cash this check in South Carolina. I guess she thought this was the boonies or something. And uh, she said that <clears throat> I'm on Social Security. I'm limited finances. I have been saving my change for a year. It is enclosed. Please use this ministry. $97. Doesn't sound like much. Supports a pastor for three months in the Philippines. 
It sends uh, three children to camp for one week. It supports uh, uh, it supports uh, a child in a school for three months. Ninety-seven dollars. Sacrificing a little from us makes a big difference overseas. Well, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do what we do. We couldn't be involved in the ministry that we're involved in without God's people um, working as co-workers with us, because that's really what they are. They're co-workers. And it's so encouraging we go someplace and somebody say, I've been, I pray for you. I pray for you regularly. We couldn't do it without these people and without their prayers, without their financial support. So we are co-workers together. Praise God for each one that that is part of our team or we're part of their team. And we talk about finances from, the st from states in Canada and England and Australia and New Zealand, but uh, Filipinos. Uh, Filipinos have been extremely generous to us over the years. When I, uh, uh, in 93, when I had uh, colon cancer, we were living in Seattle and uh, cancer is a serious, very expensive disease to, re to get. Not only the surgery, but the chemotherapy and the radiation and hospitalization and the medicine and, and all this, it's extremely expensive. And I'm sitting at the table going over the bills and I realize that insurance uh, was so gracious to us it, uh, it paid all these bills except for $8,000. <laughs> it's a lot of money for us. And uh, people began to find out about this and began to send funds in to help, and $2,000 came in. I still left the bill of 6000 Now, this was 93. That was a lot of money in 93. And I'm sitting at the table going over, and all of a sudden we started getting these envelopes from the Philippines. And pesos with these envelopes. 50 pesos, 100, 20 pesos. It cost 50 pesos to send the envelope. And it only had a 20 peso bill in it. What are you going to do with pesos in Seattle, Washington? Our bank, unbeknownst to us, had a new manager, a Filipina, a lady. When I took all these pesos over to her, where in the world are you getting all these pesos so from the Philippines? It was quite a witness to her. Why are they sending them to you? Because of my cancer and so forth. When they, she exchanged that, those pesos, it came to $6,000. So our cancer bill was paid by Filipino sacrificial giving. See the dollar bill that looks like it probably made in 1920. <laughs> Somebody had saved it so often. And even talking about sickness, and we, and recently in the Philippines, uh, just a couple of years ago, three years ago, I had pneumonia. And Filipinos have this, they come to the hospitals to visit you and they always bring a gift because hospitalization is very expensive. And, and there you can't get out of the hospital until you pay your bill. So they would bring money. And I used to get in the bag next to my bed and uh, uh, thank them. And here's sacrificial giving of these people coming to this Americano man supposed to have so much money and, and they're bringing this gift. And the thing about it was that <laughs> we had some other friends come in. They didn't have money. They couldn't leave anything. So when they would leave, I would reach down and take pesos and give to them. So money was coming in and going out, in and out, in and out. The thing was, more came in than went out. So we were released from the hospital. Margaret takes this pesos, not knowing what the bill was. She goes downstairs, and we had exactly the amount of money to pay the bill. She comes back upstairs. And we're packing my bags. The phone rings, <laughs> and it's a woman. I did not know who she was. She said, uh, Mr. Nichols. Uh, I, we got a problem down here. I don't understand. I'm here to pay your bill, 
and they say it's been paid. I said, well, yes. She says, but you're a missionary. You're not supposed to have any money. How was it paid? I said, well, people came in and she says, uh, are you telling the truth? <laughs> Did you have to borrow the money? I said, no, ma'am. She said, well, I don't like this at all because I came to pay the bill and it's already paid. And she hung up. <laughs> now, when did, does that ever happen? Found out later, never knew who she was, but somebody thought, a pastor friend of mine, I think I maybe know who that is. She'd been gifted with finances and she <clears throat> loves to pay the hospital debts of God's servants. You know, that's how God has provided for us over the years.